Where now? Chateau de Lens. The Chateau Viet? The very one. It's where Sir Lee Tibbin lives. These are friends, Remy. Uh, then, sir, I have other household matters to attend to. Very well. So, Robert, what brings you to the Chateau at this most unfortunate hour? Lee, we've come to talk to you about the Priory of Sion. The Keepers? So, this is indeed about the Grail. What is it you want to know? Well, first I'd like you to explain the true nature of the Grail to Miss Nauvoo. Robert, you've brought me a virgin? What? Virgin is the term Grail enthusiasts use to describe anyone who has never heard the true Grail story. I believe the lady here is in need of an education. How fortunate then that you've come to me. Only the worthy can find the Grail, Miss Nauvoo. The path to truth lies through the doors of my home. But they only unlock for the enlightened. He's a bit eccentric, but we're safe here. I know we can help us figure out the cryptex. Just play along for now. All right, Celty Bing. I will find the path. Welcome to the Arthurian Legend Room. If you would take notice, there are two wonderful paintings depicting the tales of Arthurian knights, and at the doors you will find the armors that they wore. The Arthurian knights had their own heraldry, which is displayed on the shields. You, Miss Nauvoo, must discern which shield goes with each painting by placing the appropriate shield with its armor. If you examine a shield, I should be more than happy to tell you that knight's tale. This is Percival's shield. Sir Percival was one of the first knights to see the Grail. During his journeys, he came across the castle of the Fisher King, and in the sky above it saw an image of the Grail. Inside, he found that the Fisher King was quite ill and bedridden. But while Percival knelt beside him, a great procession walked down the hall. At the end of the procession, a lady carried a chalice, but Percival failed to inquire about it, and the king was not healed as a result. Percival vowed to find the Grail again someday, and became one of the three knights to embark on the final quest for the Holy Grail. done. Now, what of the other knight? He looks rather plain without his shield. This is Galahad's shield. Sir Galahad was the son of Lancelot and became a knight of the Round Table. He saw a vision of angels guiding him to the Holy Grail. Thus, he was selected as one of the three knights who would go on a quest for it. When they found the final location of the Grail, Galahad was one of the few who allowed to see it. Ah, this is the shield of King Arthur Pendragon. He became king when he pulled the sword Excalibur from a stone. Uther Pendragon, Arthur's father, was the previous owner of Excalibur. Before Uther died, he implanted the sword which he got from the Lady of the Lake into a stone and said that whoever could remove it would be king. Of course, only his own magical bloodline could do so, and thus Arthur ruled over Britannia for many years.
Excellent, Miss Navu. I trust the Arthurian legends are entertaining? Yes, I quite enjoyed your tales. Knights questing for the Holy Grail does make for an entertaining story. But I assure you that it is no mere cup. I know, sometimes it's a ball. <laughs> no, no, my dear. You see, as a Grail historian, I'm often asked, where is the Grail? It is rare that people ask me, what is the Grail? Because everyone assumes that it is just an object. It is much more than that. Now that you know the question, why don't we see what answers we can find here? This is probably a passage from the Bible. Remy, I was wondering... Why? Why are you bothering me? You obviously do not need any of my services. Never mind. I thought you said the glare was not a cup. 
It isn't, but as time progressed, the Holy Grail became Arthur's Grail. The legends were intertwined, and it was simply because poets and storytellers continually wrote about it and changed a few things here or there. So that's why the Grail became a cup? Uh, not exactly. I'll explain more later. I need to move the tiles to form a picture. That part worked. of Wagner also speak of the Grail as a vessel in which the blood of Christ was gathered when he was killed on the cross. But that is not true, is it? That entirely depends on your interpretation. Grail can mean many things. Are you familiar with the symbols for male and female? Of course. These are not the original symbols. These symbols originated as ancient astronomical symbols for the planet god Mars and the planet goddess Venus. The originals are far simpler. This is the symbol for male, the blade. Quite to the point. And this is the symbol for female, the chalice. Legend tells us the Holy Grail is a chalice, a cup. But the Grail's description as a chalice is actually an allegory to protect the true nature of the Holy Grail. You mean the Grail is a woman? Exactly. A woman who carried with her a secret so powerful that if revealed, it threatened to devastate the very foundation of Christianity. Who is she? As I mentioned before, Da Vinci painted the true grail. Come to the dining room when you're ready, and I will show you Da Vinci's painting. You told me you had a Da Vinci painting that would show us the true grail? Indeed I do. I assume you recognize this? The Last Supper? Yes. Da Vinci painted many secrets within it. Perhaps you can use what we discussed earlier to find a few of them yourself. I will try. is a V-shape right in the center between Jesus and John. Robert told me earlier that the V is an ancient symbol for the chalice. This is quite true, but why would Da Vinci paint a feminine symbol into the Last Supper? I don't know. It's a painting of 13 men. Is it? Take a closer look. He 
Is that an actual image of the Grail? It's hard to say. It's almost an optical illusion, is it not? Did Da Vinci mean to say that there was a Grail Cup? Not at all. Since it's an illusion image, I would think he was saying quite the opposite. That the idea of the Grail as a cup is the fake story, and that the real story can be found elsewhere in the painting. It all goes back to the Sangreal. I have never heard of it. Sure you have. You're just used to hearing it called the Holy Grail. Holy Grail is the literal meaning of Sangreal. The phrase derives from the French Sangral, which evolved to Sangreal, and was eventually split into two words, Sangreal. Oh, does the world have anything to do with the French word sang, or Spanish sangre, meaning blood? Oh yes, the Grail has much to do with blood, but not in the way you might think. Let's look over the painting some more. <gasps> that is a woman! Surprise, surprise! It's no mistake either. Leonardo was skilled at painting the differences between the sexes. But our preconceived notions of the scene are so powerful that our mind blocks out the incongruity and overrides our eyes. Who is she? There are other clues within the painting that may reveal her name. Look again. That looks like an M between Jesus and that woman. A bit too perfect for coincidence, wouldn't you say? Why is it there? Countless Grail-related works contain the hidden letter M. Whether it's watermarks, underpaintings, or compositional illusions, conspiracists will tell you it stands for matrimonia. You mean marriage? Jesus was married to this woman? Their marriage is part of the historical record. These are photocopies of the Nag Hammadi and Dead Sea Scrolls, the earliest Christian records. Troublingly, they do not match up with the Gospels in the Bible. The Gospel of Philip is always a good place to start. And the companion of the Savior is Mary Magdalene. Christ loved her more than all the disciples and used to kiss her often on her mouth. The rest of the disciples were offended by it and expressed disapproval. They said to him, why do you love her more than all of us? Jesus was married to Mary Magdalene, the prostitute? Magdalene was no such thing. That unfortunate misconception is the legacy of a smear campaign launched by the early church to cover up her role as the Holy Grail. The early church needed to convince the world that the mortal prophet Jesus was a divine being. Therefore, any gospels that described earthly aspects of Jesus' life had to be omitted from the Bible. Like his marriage. I think we've got what we need to solve the cryptic, Sophie. There's more to find in Da Vinci's painting of the Last Supper, if you are interested, of course. Give the cryptex to me. Quickly, to the basement. The basement? It has a safe room. Do you know who that was? I can't be certain, but I believe he's the one who killed Sister Sandrine. Obviously, he's interested in you now, and he specifically wants the cryptex. This won't do at all. Is there a way out of here that doesn't go through him? Well, if he's found you here, he obviously is resourceful. Someone will have to go up there and knock him out. I'll do it. Don't be ridiculous. You are in no condition to fight that monster. I doubt very much you could knock him unconscious, Miss Naboo. But I'm afraid she's right, Robert. Perhaps.
Perhaps if we had some sort of weapon. Ah, yes. What? Do you have a gun? I'm a good shot with the pistol. No, nothing quite so barbaric. Take a look at this. Da Vinci's drawing of a ballista? You don't have one, do you? I'm afraid I don't have all of one, but I do have the frame right here. What good is that if it does not work? Well, it occurred to me that we might be able to make it work with some of the artifacts I have upstairs. Remy is something of an engineer in his spare time. Very true. What do you have upstairs that would make it work? Why, the other pieces of the ballista. There are unique properties to each piece, and I was studying them in different rooms of the house. They are, most unfortunately, scattered about and quite heavy. Then I will get them for us. That's very brave, Sophie, but I really think I should go with you. If you insist, Robert, but let me handle moving the large pieces. A good gust of wind could bowl you over right now. If you insist, my lady. I doubt very much that Robert will be more than a distraction for this giant of a man, but Robert does have the cryptex, and that's the only thing this lunatic seems to want. If Robert should get into trouble, use a mace or a fire poker, whatever you can find to stop that monster from killing Mr. Langdon. We still need him if we want to find out where the cryptex leads. Don't worry, I won't leave Robert to die. We'll get through this, Sir TB. I mean, Sir B. Together, or not at all? Sophie, let's go. I don't see him out there. Warning you, I am an agent of the judicial police and die. That's enough of that talk. It would seem God's hand is fallible. It's going to take a lot more than that to stop him. Let's get this ballista piece to the elevator. You just don't give up, do you? You will not displace our faith. God's hands are upon you, heathens. Like you displace Sister Sandrine? Is life not sacred to your religion? She was working against God. She scorned the work of Manu's Day, as did the Seneschal and that lying worm they call their Grandmaster. No! You! Sophie, I'm sorry. Let's get this ballista piece to the elevator. That monster's rage is endless.
this should be useful. It is not murder when it is God's will. God does not suffer lies, and with their dying breaths that is all that the Seneschal could speak. God will suffer your lies no more! Murder is the greatest sin no matter what the reason! The teacher is wise. He knows what evils are necessary for good to be achieved. Sophie, get back! What was that about a teacher? Someone told this man to kill my grandfather. We must find out who. That bookcase isn't going to stop him. Let's get the last piece of the ballista into the elevator. <laughs> 